Welcome back to Spore and Sprout. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to grow button mushrooms at home. A lot of beginners in mushroom cultivation will think that button mushrooms are the easiest to start growing, but actually they are more advanced due to their unique fruiting requirements. The first step is to start with a fresh button mushroom, which you can find at any grocery store. In a clean environment, preferably inside of a still air box or in front of a laminar flow hood, I rip the mushroom in half, exposing the sterile tissue on the inside. Then I use a sterilized scalpel to transfer a piece of that tissue to some pre-made sterilized nutrient agar plates. After the transfer, I wrap the plate in parafilm and incubate at 75 degrees Fahrenheit for a few days. After a few days, I check to make sure the sample is clean and healthy. And if it's not, I make more transfers from it to new agar plates, and then I let them continue growing until it covers the plate. After the agar culture has grown out enough, I make some sterilized rye grain and I add wedges from the agar plate to the rye grain. I will leave links in the description to videos that will teach you how to make your own agar plates and your own sterilized rye grain. In the same clean environment, I use a sterilized blade to cut up the agar plate into wedges and add those wedges to the grain. I like to use multiple wedges per jar, that way there's many inoculation points and it will speed up the colonization process. After the wedges have been added to the jars, I attach the modified lids and then shake the jar to distribute the agar wedges. If you don't know how to make these modified lids, I will also leave a video tutorial link in the description. The jars are now left on a shelf in a room that is around 75 degrees Fahrenheit for about one week to allow the mycelium to grow from the agar wedges onto the grain. The jar is then shaken one more time to distribute that mycelium to speed up the colonization process. After another week, the grain spawn should be close to full colonization, so now I start working on the substrate. I add some chopped straw to a 5 gallon bucket and then I fill it up with boiling water and then I close the lid and let it sit for 3 days. After three days, I start draining out all of the water from the straw. Okay. 
While the straw was draining, I went to my neighbor's horse stables and borrowed a five gallon bucket full of aged horse manure. I brought the five gallon bucket full of horse manure back home and dumped it into this container so that I could break up the nuggets. After chopping up the manure, I add it back into the five gallon bucket so that we can get a proper measurement of the materials. For a five gallon bucket full of straw, I add in seven quarts of manure and mix it up well. After mixing up all the substrate, I add it into quart jars so that I can steam sterilize them. After the substrate has been added to the jars, I attach a modified lid which just has a hole covered in two pieces of micropore tape. Now I just add a square piece of aluminum foil to the jar lids. Instead of pressure cooking the jars at 15 psi, we are just giving them a steam water bath for one hour in this large canning pot. The water level should come up about halfway from the bottom of the jars. Once the substrate is cooled down and the grain spawn is fully colonized, it's now time to spawn the substrate. For the six quart dub tub, I use one quart jar of spawn to three quart jars of substrate. I use a black trash bag to line the bin, but it also works without the trash bag. A 
if you use regular mouth quart jars, it can be a little bit difficult to get the substrate out. I forgot that I was wearing my wedding ring when I was reaching into the jar and it ripped my glove, which is not a big deal. I was just more worried about touching the gross manure. After adding all three quart jars of substrate, I add in the quart jar of colonized grain spawn. After the grain spawn has been mixed into the substrate, I attach the lid and let it grow at 75 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 days. After 10 days, I start preparing the casing layer, which is this natural and organic seed starting jiffy mix that contains peat moss and lime calcium hydroxide to buffer the pH. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can find this product. I didn't use any exact measurements, I just added some of the mix to a bowl and then poured in some regular tap water and mixed it together until it has reached field capacity. If the mixture is soupy, you can keep adding more of the peat moss until only a few drops come out when squeezed. The casing layer can be used right away and it should not be steam sterilized or pressure cooked. Button mushrooms need the microorganisms that are present in the casing layer to help stimulate and initiate the fruiting cycle. I recommend adding two to three inches of the casing layer on top of the substrate, which will provide the correct microclimate and moisture content needed for fruiting. I use a misting bottle to mist the inside of a second six quart bin and place it on top. This method is called the dub tub, which will maintain humidity needed for fruiting. After one to two weeks inside of the dub tub, you'll start to notice these small white bumps on the substrate, which is the primordial growth of the mushroom. Three times per day, the top tub is removed, remisted, and the substrate is fanned for about five minutes. After another one to two weeks inside of the dub tub, you'll notice that those small bumps start turning into recognizable baby button mushrooms. I was pretty surprised at how fast this giant one in the corner started growing. Can harvest individual mushrooms as they mature. I was also surprised about this conjoined triplet button mushroom cluster. You can see that there are hundreds of baby tiny mushrooms that don't seem to be maturing completely and that would be due to the low moisture content. So if you add more of a casing layer or more water, you should be able to get those baby mushrooms to fully develop.
I did experiment after harvesting the mushrooms, adding more of a casing layer on top of all the little bumps, and it did work. A lot of the mushrooms started coming up through the second casing layer, and then I did, for other bins, I added more water on top, and that is also working. So if you have a problem with them not fully developing, add more of a casing layer or add more water. And that's all there is to it. I hope this video is helpful if you were trying to figure out how to grow button mushrooms. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below, or you can join the new Discord community, which I'll leave a link for in the description. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications to see more videos just like this one.